Hi everyone, it's Sherry and Loki. We have an absolutely wonderful project for you today. Loki went to the groomers and she has her pretty little bows in and her bandana. Right, Loki? Y'all, we have an awesome project for you today. Stay tuned. Y'all, welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Thank you all so much for being here and thank you for supporting me and my family, including Loki. Today, I have a super awesome way that you can take one cardboard box and turn it into something amazing. So Loki's getting a little bit restless, so I'm going to put her down so that we can craft. So as I was helping my daughter to package her cup orders, we're using boxes like this, and I started thinking, there are going to be a lot of people getting this box. So I have a wonderful idea on a way that you can use it. So if you get this box or a box similar to it, make sure that you save it because you're going to be able to turn it into something amazing. And y'all, here's what I'm talking about. I took this box and I turned it into this. I have some of those composition books that we covered in mind, but this is truly multifunctional. We're going to keep it a little bit rustic, but it'll be a great addition to your workspace. You can even use something like this within your home, depending on your decor and your need. But I thought a makeover would be great for those of you who are going to be receiving this in the mail and for those of you who might have received something similar from other places from which you've made purchases. So I'm going to flip to my overhead camera. We're going to do this very quickly. So here is a closer look at what I did. The box measures 10 inches across and it's four inches high and four inches deep. And then the side panel is about 11 inches tall. So we're going to make a slight modification, very slight modification, so that we can create something as beautiful as this. I used several pieces of that floral and lace digital paper that I shared with you if you're interested. I'll have a link to purchase the paper in my description box. But I decided to go with that because my idea for using this really is to use it as a way to store those composition books. My sister will be getting the composition books because she uses a lot of composition books and notebooks in her work. So I'll be filling this with a whole bunch of composition books and I'll be presenting it to her in this. So let me show you what we need. So what I have is my empty box. This box has already been put together. So we're not really going to take it apart. I'm going to leave it in its natural state and it is a very easy box to put together. I will have it linked in the description box below. For those of you who might have a need or you want to purchase boxes like this, now they are sold in sets of 50, so you might be able to find a smaller quantity, but I will link what I have purchased. And then I decided that we'll go with the blush pink as our cover for this, so it's going to be so easy. And I will be using my Xyron to put adhesive on the back. But if you don't have a Xyron, you can use a spray adhesive or you can cover this in tape. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to place the ruler down because what I want to do is I want to come into this point right here, the fold over point, and I want to trim away this. So you, it'll make sense in just a minute because I'm going to take the ruler, we're going to place it right there on the edge and then I'm just going to trim away this and then I'll trim out this because what I'm doing is just giving me a straight edge here and now I need to give myself a straight edge here. So again, I'm going to take my ruler and line it up. And then I'm just going to trim away. And then right down here, I'm just going to trim. 
because what I wanted was for the ends to be like this. So all I did was trimmed off the uneven edges. So then I'll just be deciding which papers do I want to use to cover the box. So all I'm going to do is just take this piece and I'm going to measure from here to here and it looks like it's about seven inches and then I'll measure this way and we have 10 inches. So I'm going to cut this down to 10. seven and then I'm going to place it on right there and to place mine on I am going to be using my Xyron Creatopia to place adhesive on the back so for those of you who might not have seen it before this is my Xyron Creatopia you basically put your paper in you crank the wheel and it is going to put adhesive on the back then here on the back side, you're going to have this little cutter and you just trim it. Now you can still find Xyron Creatopias on the market. The hard part is finding the refill cartridges. They do come up for sale on Amazon every now and then, but you have to keep looking. For those of you who have Xyrons, unfortunately, I don't have a magic bullet for finding them. I just check Amazon almost every day to see if they're out there. And usually when they put them out there, for some reason they only put a small amount. So what I'm doing here is I'm just running my fingers along the edge to remove some of the gumminess that often transfers. So now I'm just going to peel away the backer and I'm going to put it right here. Now you don't have to have a Xyron Creatopia. They have other sticker makers on the market that you can use. They have one that will apply adhesive on pieces up to nine inches wide, which means that you can take your eight and a half by 11 inch piece and run it through on the eight and a half inch side and get full coverage. So now that I have this piece on like that, I am going to take this piece and we're just going to trim it to fold it over into the inside. So I'm just trimming this down to six and three eighths by 10 because I know that works. Then I'm going to take this piece and we're going to trim it down to six and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And I'll have two pieces of that and these will be for the side pieces so like I said this is going to be pretty rustic but I still think that it's going to be very cute and it'll all start to take shape in just a minute so we have these two pieces I'm going to go ahead and just add my adhesive by putting that piece in rolling it through and then I'll put these two pieces in and roll them through. Y'all, I have had this Xyron Creatopia since they first came out. It was one of those things that when I saw it, I was like, my goodness, I have to have that. And I'm so glad that I did purchase it because it's been one of those purchases that really has made it so much easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this piece. We're going to take it, put it along the bottom here. I didn't get that quite even, but that's okay. And then I'll fold over into the inside like that. And then I'll take my side pieces, put them on like this. We'll fold over 
and get them stuck. We'll take our next side piece. We're going to put this on. It's kind of hard for me to see this, but we're going to make it work. Put it on like that and bring it inside. Now I know my box isn't going to be perfect and that's why I called it rustic because we're going to leave these raw edges showing here, but we are going to place down a piece on the inside. So we're going to cut out a piece for the inside. So I'm going to take this piece and I think we need to trim to about nine and three quarters. So basically all I'm doing is going with the interior size of the box and nine and three quarters is going to work. And then I'm just going to guess and cut it at seven and a quarter because all I'm going to do is take this, put it in like this, and then just match it with this piece here. That's all. So I'm going to take this piece, let's run it through, and get some adhesive on the back. Let's trim that. Sorry, but y'all might not be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to take this piece we're going to press it into place on the inside just like this and then I can press it into place there and you can see how well that actually covered. Nothing hard about this process at all. We're just taking a box and we are covering it in pretty paper. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take two pieces so that we can cover the back and like I said this is pretty rustic but y'all, we're going to make it work. I know I need to cut these two pieces down to 10 inches. And y'all, what I'm showing you here is not everything has to be perfect. We don't always have to use sheet paper. You can piece together using some of the papers that you might have in your collection. Just make them work for you. So I am going to take my pages and run them through. Again, you can cover your paper in tape or spray adhesive if you don't have a Xyron. So now we're just going to peel off the backer and we can take this piece and I'm just going to put it here at the top like this and we'll smooth that out. Then I'll take my other one And I'm just going to take it, line it up with this one, and then we'll fold over to the bottom. And y'all, that's it. I'm just going to take some burlap flowers that I have, and we're just going to put them right there. So if you want to make some covered notebooks, and I'll have that video linked in the description box below, if you want to make some covered notebooks and then you want to make a holder that matches the notebooks, this will give you an idea of how you can do it. Here I used a new box, but you don't have to have a new box for this project. Just take the box that you have, and once you place down your papers like this, it's going to help to stiffen it so that it holds its original shape. So I have brought the original one back in and we now have the one that we just did. Y'all, aren't these just so stinking cute? This is something that you can do with any eight and a half by 11 inch papers that you have. You don't need sheet paper, you don't need rolled paper, you don't even need 12 by 12s. If you have eight and a half by 11, you can see how I use that eight and a half by 11 paper to make this work for me. Then I can put my little notebooks here on the inside. So I'm going to put one in here and one in there so that you can see 
I can fill this with notebooks and I will be filling this one with notebooks and giving it to my sister. And y'all, I know not everyone has these boxes, but this might spark an idea of some boxes that you might have in your stash, in your garage, in your recycle bin, wherever you're storing some of those boxes that you get in the mail. This might spark an idea or two. So I hope you have enjoyed today's super awesome way to transform a box. If you have enjoyed this video, and if you've enjoyed your visit from Loki, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, and be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.